This is chapter 19. We're going to talk about chemical thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is the study of energy changes accompanying physical and chemical changes. The term itself clearly suggests what is happening. Thermos from temperature meaning energy and dynamics, which means the change over time. In other words, this is the study of energy transfer in physical and chemistry and chemical changes. Our, at the end of this model, you will be able to explain the meaning of spontaneous process, reversible process, irreversible, irreversible process, and isothermal process. Also, you will be able to define entropy and state the second law of thermodynamics. You will be able to explain how the entropy of the system is related to the number of possible microstates. You will describe the kinds of molecular motion that a molecules can possess, and you will predict the sign of delta S, or the change in entropy, for physical and chemical processes. Let's first uh, talk about the first law of thermodynamics. You will recall from chapter 5 that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Therefore, the total energy of the universe is constant because you can destroy it, you can create it. You, you, the only thing that you can do is you can transfer it. So energy can, however, be converted from one form to another or transferred from a system to the surroundings or from the surrounding to the system. So the energy, you, the only thing that can do with it is convert it in another form of energy or to transfer that energy from the system to the surroundings or vice versa. Now let's define two very important concepts of thermodynamics. One is enthalpy and the other one is entropy. The enthalpy is the heat absorbed by a system during a constant pressure process. So this basically is the, the, the heat that has been absorbed uh, for a system where there is no change in pressure. And the entropy is a measure of randomness in a system. Both of these concepts play a role in determining whether a process is spontaneous. So let's talk about spontaneous processes. Spontaneous processes proceed without any outside assistance. The gas in basal A will spontaneously effuse into basal B, but it will not spontaneously return to basal A. Here we have the gas in purple, purple gas here in, in, in the chamber A, in the basal A, and when we open this stopcock, it, go, it will go through A and B. So you will find there that it, this process is spontaneously. When you open, the gas starts to, to, to go to the, to the vessel B. But you can, that those gas couldn't come back to the basal A, okay? So that's why this is not a spontaneous process. So it's spontaneous to, 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 um, to basically fill all the, the, the volume that it has available. But it's not possible to go back to, to be um, trapped in that, in, in, for example, in this case, in basal A. That is not a, pro a spontaneous process. Processes that are spontaneous in one direction are non-spontaneous in the reverse, the reverse direction. For example, here we have two eggs, and when we drop them, they will broke, basically. But there is the, the, the reverse processes that is basically to put the GAN, the, the, all the yolk and everything inside the, the egg and, and, and have, have them like without any scratch or nothing. That's not, that's a not spontaneous process. So from here to here is spontaneous, but the reversible process is not spontaneous. So all the processes that are spontaneous, the reverse are non-spontaneous. There are a few experimental factors that could affect the spontaneous of a process. Two of them are the temperature and the pressure. An example of how temperature affect spontaneity is ice melting and the ice freezing. Here we have ice, that is um, solid water, and at temperature higher than zero degrees, it will melt and you will find a liquid. This is a spontaneous process at temperature higher than zero degrees. At those temperatures, you will not see liquid be transformed to the solid, but at temperatures lower than zero, you will see the reverse process. 
you will see how the liquid of water will transform to the solid, will freeze as a solid, a water solid. But at this temperature, uh, lower than zero, you will not see the solid be transformed to the liquid, okay? So that's why the spontaneous process will be affected by temperature. At higher temperature, the, the spontaneous process will be melting the solid, the water, the, the, the ice to liquid, and at lower uh, temperature lower than zero, the spontaneous process will be turning the water liquid to the solid to ice. Below a reversible process. Uh, this will be the reversible flow of heat. Heat can flow reversibly between a system and its surrounding only if the two have an infinitesimal small difference in temperature. So here we have in the uh, darker uh, pink, we have the system and around is the surrounding. So an increasing in the temperature of the system by a delta T cause heat to flow from the system to the surroundings. Decreasing the temperature of the system by delta T will cause the heat to flow from the hot surrounding to the colder system. And this basically is a reversible process. You haven't changed any factor of this, of this, pro, of this system. All the same, the same temperature basically is slightly different, but that's the point that because this is slightly different, that can be a reversible process where sometimes the system will heat the surrounding and sometimes the surrounding will warm the system. Reversible processes, the system changes so that the, the system and surroundings can be returned to the original state by exactly reversing the process. This maximizes work done by a system on the surrounding. So you haven't changed any of the, of the factors around this process. They are all the same. And that's why you can go to the original sta state by exactly reversing all the process and you will have it. Okay, so that will be a reversible process. Now here we have uh, uh, a reversible process. A reversible process cannot be undone by exactly reversing the change to the system or cannot have the process exactly follow in reverse. Also, any spontaneous process is irreversible. So here we have a gas in this um, part of this container. When we remove this part, now the gas will be will expand to all the system. Now, if you want to go back to this um, original state, you need to do work, a work that you didn't do in this part. So because you change factors in the process, this is not an, a reversible uh, process. It's an irreversible process basically this part okay so this part is irreversible because you can't go back to this without doing or adding another factor to the system so you can have the original state but with the same factors you can reach that original state again now the entropy can be thought as a measure of randomness of the system this concept or this um yeah, this concept entropy is a state of function. So that means that the change in entropy is going to be equal to the final entropy minus the initial entropy. So because the state function, it doesn't has to do any to doesn't have anything to do with how it reached from initial to final. Okay, it's just the difference between the state between the final state and the initial state. It can be found by the heat transfer from surroundings at a given temperature, okay? So in other words, we have that the delta S can be equal to the heat uh, reversible, in this case, process, and over the temperature. Now let's talk about the second law of thermodynamics. The entropy of the universe increases in any spontaneous processes. That's the second law of thermodynamic the entropy of the universe increases in any spontaneous processes. This results in the following relationships. The re for a reversible process, the delta S of the universe is going to be equal to the delta S of the system plus the delta S of the surrounding, and this will be equal to zero. For a reversible process, the delta S of the universe is going to be larger than zero, but it also is going to be equal to the sum of the change in entropy of the system 
plus the change in entropy of the surround. Now let's see entropy on the molecular scale or at the molecular level. Here we have two molecules, they are gas, that are in the left vessel. If we open here, what will happen? What will happen with these two molecules? They will stay there or they will go to the other side or they split. One option is that the blue one stay in the left one and the red in the right side. Another option is that the red one stay in the left one and the blue in the right side. Other option is that both of them stay in the left side or both of them go to the right side. So this process basically is four possible arrangement of those molecules when we open the system. And those arrangements or possibilities are called microstates. There was a research called Boltzmann that described the entropy on the molecular level. The gas molecule expansion, he established that two molecules are in the apparatus above, both start in one side. What is the like, like, likelihood they both will end up there in the same vessel? It will be one half um, elevated to the power of two. Okay, so that will be two molecules. What about one mole of the molecule? We know that one mole is 6.02 times power of 23 molecules. So the probability will be one half power of 6.02 times 10 power of 23. So there will be any, basically any chance to have all those molecules in the same side at one time. Basically, there's no chance. That's why gases spontaneously expand to fill the volume given. They basically expand all over the volume, the total volume that they have available. The most probable arrangement of molecules will be approximately equal molecules in each side. As we can see here, one and one and one and one or two and zero and zero two so basically it will be this one where we have 50 percent of them will be the same amount of molecules in each side that will be maybe the most probable arrangement of the molecules so let's talk about statistical thermodynamics thermodynamics looks at bulk properties of substance in other words they look at the big picture of what is happening we have seen what happens on the molecular scale. When we, in, in, the, in our last um, slide, we saw all the probabilities or microstate available for that uh, options or open uh, the system for the gas. Now, how they relate? Use, we use a statistical or probability to relate them. The field is called thermodynamic. Microstates is a single possible arrangement of position and kinetic energy of molecules. Now Boltzmann, he used those microstates. There are so many possible microstates that we can't look at every picture. He represents the number of microstates as W. It's different as work. Work is, is not capital. This one is capital. The entropy is a measure of how many microstates are associated with a particular macroscopic state. The connection between the number of microstates and the entropy of the system is the system times k constant, the natural logarithm of w that represent the microstate of that system, all the possible microstates of the system. So, in other words, when we are looking for the entropy change, we know that this is a state function, that the final value minus the initial value will give the overall change. So in this case, an increase in the number of microstates results in a positive entropy change, or in other words, more disorder. And remember that we are the universe is looking for that, to have more disorder. Okay, so a positive entropy will be very helpful. It will be um, something that you're looking for, okay, to have a positive entropy. So that means that the delta S, before we mentioned that the delta S is the S final minus the S initial, but we uh, defined in, in our last slide that the entropy is equal to the constant times the natural logarithm of the uh, microstates. So this is the final entropy, this is the initial entropy. So we can rearrange this equation and establish that 
the delta s is equal to k times the natural logarithm of the final microstate divided by the initial microstates. Now let's talk about the effect of volume and temperature change on the system. If we increase the volume, there are more positions possible for the molecules. This results in more microstates, so that it will increase temperatures. So when you increase that volume, you will have more uh, space so those molecules can more, be more randomness. So that, that's why it will increase entropy. And why do you think about increasing temperature? The increase in temperature will increase also the entropy. Remember that when we increase temperature, we also increase the average kinetic energy of the molecules. So that means that they will be uh, faster than before. This results in a greater distribution of molecules, molecular speed. Therefore, there are more possible kinetics energy values resulting in more microstate increasing the entropy. So now that we're talking about the kinetic energy and about the molecules, let's talk about the molecular motions that also will affect this entropy. The molecules exhibit several types of mo motions. Number one is the translational. Translational is a movement of the entire molecule from one place to another. When the whole molecule moves, from point A to point B. Vibrational are periodic motion of atoms within a molecule. So a vibrational is when, when, when they move inside, when they vibrate the, the whole molecule. And rotational is the rotation of the molecule about an axis. So here we have an example of vibration. Here we have oxygen and hydrogen. They can vibrate going in this way from the hydrogen, you can see here that the slightly hydrogen there goes close to oxygen and then uh, go far from oxygen. That's one type of vibration. They can also, those um, bonds can get closer and also can get far a little bit uh, from them. So that's also another type of vibration. And sometimes when you pull one more than the other one, that's also another type of vibration. So we have vibration that are molecular motions and also we have rotation. So here we have an axis uh, here, and the molecule of water will uh, turn around that axis. So this is the vibrational, this is the, I mean, the rotational, the vibrational, and the translational when you move the molecule from point A to point B. Now, the number of microstates, and therefore the entropy, tend to increase with increase in Number one, temperature. Number two, in the volume, because if we increase the volume of the system, there will be a higher randomness. And number three, the number of independent moving molecules. So as higher those movement, you're gonna have a higher randomness. So in other words, let's see this entropy from a physical state perspective. The entropy will increase with the freedom of motion of molecules. That means that if we have the entropy for a gas state will be larger for the liquid state and this entropy will also be larger to the entropy of the solid state because here you have a larger number of freedom than in a liquid than in a, than in a solid. So the entropy for the gas phase will be always um, larger than for the liquid and the liquid as well will be larger than for the solid. So the entropy of a system increases for processes where the gases form from either solid or liquid. So if you're going from a solid uh, phase to a gas, that will increase the entropy. Also, if you're going from the liquid to the gas, that will increase entropy. Another one is when liquids or solution forms from solid. So if you have a solid that is melted and you produce a liquid, that process increased also the entropy. And number three, the number of gas molecule increases during a chemical reaction. If you increase the number of gas molecule in a reaction, that also will increase the entropy of a system.